Oh, things have just got spicy in the IPL. The man cat decision. Oh, let's find out on Hogs Flock what I think. The man cat rule. Okay, it's an unwritten rule. It's a handshake at the moment that a bowler can't man cat a batsman. Now, this was brought in probably for test cricket. Times have changed. We moved into one day cricket and we've moved into T20 cricket. Now, T20 cricket is completely different to the other two. They take a long time to finish. T20 is about quick action. T20 is about athleticism. It's about taking advantage of the opposition. It's about turning ones into twos. That athleticism of running between the wickets. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Ashwin was well in his rights to attempt the man cat. But as the rule stands right now, Josh Butler should not have been given out because they interpreted as where the bowler would have let go of the ball at the time that the batsman was out of his crease. Now, Ashwin would have let go of the ball well before Butler was out of the crease. Yes. So as far as I'm concerned, the umpire made the wrong decision. But now we're going to clear this right up on April 1st, in about a week's time. The batsman can't leave the crease till the bowler lets go of the ball, which I think is a fantastic rule. How many times have we seen batsmen coming back for a second and they're just making their ground? Right, the reason why they've done that is because they've taken a couple of inches, even metres, to get that added advantage out the start. Also, when we get to those final overs, those death overs, how many times have we seen, or how important is it, to get the big hitter on strike on those particular overs? So if a particular batsman is not on strike on the final ball of a delivery, but he's going to be on strike in the next over, say someone like a Karen Pollard, he's going to try and take that advantage to get back on strike so he can take full toll of the six balls uh, the next innings. So we've got to stamp that out. We talk about the spirit of cricket, right. Well, the spirit of cricket is to play within the rules. The rules are you can't leave your crease until the bowler has let go of the ball. So this is bringing the contest back in. This is putting the onus back on the bowler. Now, I've heard Dean Jones say so many times, especially when spinners are on or even fast bowlers, while you're at the non-striker's end, you've got to look at the bowler, see if you can pick up any variations. So batsmen should be looking at the bowler to do that, but they also should be picking, uh, looking at the bowler to make sure they haven't got out of their crease before he has let go of the ball. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, Ashwin was well in his rights. The game's got to stamp this out. The batsmen are taking advantage of that unwritten rule of uh, no man cat. Well, times have changed. T20 has changed. You stay behind your crease, We don't see uh, um, long jump jumpers being able to creep over the line. We don't see bowlers being able to bowl no balls with uh, being over the line. We don't see other athletes or 100 metre sprinters being able to get that advantage with a uh, head start. No, you can't get a head start as a batsman. You've got to have athleticism. You've got to be ready at the point of delivery. You can have your batting like that, but you can't move till that bowler has let go of the ball. So you've got to practice getting off the mark quickly, like a sprinter. You've got to practice getting in and out. You've got to be able to make sure you predict whether you can make that uh, or turn that one into a two. So batsmen, get back in your crease. Bowlers, the man cat's on for me.